What's up, Uyghur Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Chit Chat and Chai. I'm your co-host, Lala Mehmet. And I'm your co-host, Nirbari Kelpin. And today we are joined with very wonderful guests all the way from Canada. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hello, everyone. I'm Sabiha Trusson from Montreal, Canada. <laughs> Who's next? Hi, I'm Afida Abdelkader from Montreal. Hi guys, I'm Dulara Batrusun from Montreal. Why don't you guys just tell us a little bit about like the Canada Uyghur community for those people who don't know, because a lot of our viewers are living in the States. In Toronto, there's a lot, and Montreal as well, there's a lot, and like Vancouver, Calgary, those places. I've, I've never been to Canada, I, I literally don't know. <laughs> Zalala, you're like just an outlier here right now. I feel like in Canada there's like a good amount of really talented youth when it comes to the arts um because I don't know when I went just like at events in general like even really young girls would be like performing dances and stuff and I was like wow yeah we got a lot of dancers here what are you trying to say about America this buddy I mean I mean (laughs) uneducated what am I trying to say (laughs) anyways have you guys been to Virginia no. Um, no, I went to New Jersey like last year. New Jersey, girl. New Jersey. Is that is that close to Virginia? I I literally it's like don't a know. Four five hour drive. You guys should oh, come this summer for the soccer tournament. Just some background info. Each year, we would, we have a big soccer tournament that takes place in the summer. Um, there are teams from Canada. There are teams from each state. Well, not every state, but states that are have more that are more highly populated with Uyghur people. So there's California. There's Boston, Virginia. Um, and this year it's taking place in Virginia. So we're really excited for that. And hopefully we can attend if they do it during our summer break. You guys have you guys have a big team in Virginia. We for, do. And they're really soccer. good. Yeah, Uyghur United is gonna win. Montreal FC is the future, though. We're all, like, Yeah, we're all, like, minor. new generation, <laughs> young, you know? We'll see who wins. <laughs> Not really our generation. Our generation is more open-minded, I would say, when it comes to these things. But the older Uyghurs, they kind of categorize girls' sports and guys' sports. So, for example, um, I remember I told one of my family members, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I'm playing soccer. Because in middle school, I was playing soccer. And she was like, because oh, I'm like, why are you playing soccer? Like, why don't you play volleyball? Like... Like soccer is like a sport for guys. And she was like, and I was like, Oh my Girl. god, my mom would tell me the same thing. So when I was younger for a really long time, I did gymnastics. But like before that, or like during that, I also had a period when I kind of wanted to play soccer too. And my mom would be like, It's such a dangerous sport. Like exactly. all of these things. She was like, It's for guys, like you know. And then I did gymnastics, which is seen as like a very like yeah. really more feminine yeah yeah even for like i don't know if you have, if you guys have played pijor like you like step on it like have you have you have you done that like it's it's common but then yeah in but then we used to play that like outside and even for those little games like you would hear people say oh my god like girls don't don't do too much your feet is gonna get big I'm like <laughs> what is up with you them big feet <laughs> but i feel like like these kinds of stereotypes like bleed into other topics as well not just sports Mm, for sure here guys um are I feel like parents are more lenient with guys like growing up with me too like my mom my dad kept me very strict with my academics and it was really important for me to maintain my grades so I wouldn't be let out a lot either I wouldn't get to like hang out um but I had a lot of like we were guy friends that I would hear about like they would be going out a lot you know and like they can like go to their friends houses sleep over like us yeah, girls sleepovers it's so sleepovers unfair it's a big one Never yeah, sleepovers. i remember i had to zalala and i tried to have sleepovers together so many it's just times. my parents i'm telling you my parents were so strict with that not even like to my like close close friend's house i was not allowed to sleep over ever not even like not even miss nurberi han who i've known for like <laughs> almost 10 years maybe more than 10 years actually we've known each other for like 15 years now Lala, like, i can't believe you said like we've known each other for longer and you didn't remember okay i've known nurberi <laughs> for like, like a long time but i've literally never slept over with her at her house if it's a sleepover she has to come to mine or it's like a done deal and it's just 
It's just how yeah. it be. Sleepover? Yeah, it's like the same as me and Akira. She always comes mm-hmm. to my house for sleepover, but like I barely go to hers. The last time she slept over my house was like years ago when she lived in Toronto. Like, mm-hmm. and that was with her whole entire family. <laughs> That's, that's the count. only time it's allowed. <laughs> Your whole family has to be there too. Like that does not count. <laughs> Speaking of that, what are your thoughts on Mimon? For me personally, yeah. when I'm older and with my friends, like we always talk about it. We're like we're gonna be different from our parents when it comes to Mimon dot to look and when it comes to stuff like that. I personally think we should be. I mean, obviously we will have Mimon at our house once in a while, but sometimes I feel like. Some families, it's too often. I feel like there should be a balance. Are you trying to tell me to never visit you? No, get me to the list. I mean, like, get me. No, because you know how they'll invite like, like huge miman and like they have to cook like 10, 20 different types of like dishes and then they have to clean and then there's the little kids, they're like running around the house and stuff. Obviously, there will be miman like that, but so, I feel like it needs to be less. So when I have kids, you're not gonna call me any over anymore, Bruh, oh She's God. twisting my words. Do you see this guy? She's twisting my words. So mean to me. But I personally think it's a very like, it's a very beautiful aspect of our culture. Like <laughs> the big mandat is is a big thing. Um, I just, I mean. Like whenever there's a mehman, I'm not the one cooking, but like, I love the vibe. You know, like. I mean, I think it's the beautiful. Food. Too. But I don't want to be put through that yeah. on a weekly basis because I love Mimans too. I get to see my friends. It's like really heartwarming. But at the same time, when I'm older and when I have a job and I have kids of my own and I have a house to take care of, I don't want to. Obviously, there will be Miman, right? But I'm not saying I'll completely won't do it. It's just less, not on like a weekly basis, maybe more of like once a month. Yeah. Who's doing weekly basis? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm coming over every week. It's just I've never, party, oh, girl. It's the party. Oh, the No one's like that in Virginia. How dare you put this on me? I think. I think it comes down to if your husband helps you. I think like like women, we were girls and we were women have this idea of like as so much work because it's always the woman doing all the work. Like if we think about it, like who is prepping like the dasthan? It's the girls. Like that's my job. When Miman come, like I have to set the table and everything. And then, you know, it's my mom and like all the women in the kitchen cooking for everyone and then setting the table and then like bringing out the food and then cleaning up afterwards. And I feel like that that's why we think of Miman Dachlak as so much work when in reality it's supposed to be something that's like beautiful in our culture that our culture only has, you know, like what other culture I'm actually I'm sure there's a lot of other cultures that do this, but in Uyghur culture, I think it's just really like a heartwarming thing, like we just said. But I think it boils down to just women doing everything and then us, all of us being women right now, have this idea on our heads that's like, okay, so doing this is a lot of work. I think the girls, they just get like more responsibilities. Like even as a mihman, like for example, let's say I'm the mihman going to someone else's house, right? I'm a girl. I still have to like help the the host. <laughs> Sorry, host, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, do you remember when we went to like... um? This the lady's house in Toronto. Toronto. I was like all dressed up and she's like, can you help me make lachman? I was just like in the house making lachman. Some lady in Toronto and just like. Even if her, even if the host didn't ask you, my mom would like yeah. tell me like, go help her or something. No, like, yeah, I feel like it's a given for us to get up and help when we're at a Miman. But I'm kind of surprised to hear that the host actually asked because I personally have never been in a situation where the person, the host was like, Nurpari go do this go do that you know because I feel like I don't know that's interesting I feel like it's in a more subtle way like nobody's ever like do this it's like oh yeah. man, 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 you know it's never like can you go do that it's more like oh would you mind doing that while I do this I think it's more like women that. are really good at that they're like yeah oh, and it's also just because like since it's like even when Mihan's coming to my house you know I, I just feel like I have to do it because I'm a woman you know too, so even yeah. when I go to other people's houses it's like it's just feeling inside of me it's like okay I have to hang out like I have to help out you know? it's like the responsibility of an Uyghur woman like that's kind of how I was raised too my younger brother he's like nine uh. years old <laughs> oh my brother is speaking of your brother <laughs> okay I'm so sorry about that but anyways I have a nine-year-old brother at his age, I. 
<laughs> at his age I was cleaning the house I learned how to like cook simple like dishes but at his age like he can't even wake up by himself like like I was doing everything and like some like I can't like the difference between us like it's it's so big like I can't comprehend it Sadie how you've been pretty quiet what do you <sighs> think about inequalities that we women have been facing <laughs> that's a pretty big I don't know if we want to dive into that whole like topic but just like in general like <laughs> we've kind of talked about our experiences and not to put you on the spot but <laughs> <laughs> okay personally I just I feel that the like the community is very judgy on like the the, the women and um like whenever a woman gets divorced in the community, it's like this big, huge deal. And whenever, it, whenever it's a man, it's like, oh, he'll he'll find someone else. Like it's no big deal. But when it's a woman, it's like, oh my god, her life is ruined. Like nobody's gonna want her anymore. Mm -hmm. I I like I'm just realizing like how big of an issue that is in our community. Like you are so right. Like in our community, when a man gets divorced, it's almost certain that he will remarry. And he will remarry another woman. And sometimes the time frame is like crazy short. Like, Nurpedi, do you know that one guy in our Uyghur community? Which one? There's too many that have been in there's this, this There's this one guy whose wife like passed away. And like I heard, like I don't really know these people, but I heard that he like Found, like moved on very 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 quickly oh I think I know who you're talking about mm -hmm. yeah. I really don't know much about it either but that's basically what happened his wife passed away and he got married really quickly like within a year or something like that like within a year of her like passing he was like married he was done he was moved on like married I also want to add in the topic of single mothers into this because my mom was a single mother before she passed away and she just received so much unnecessary shit from the Uyghur community. Like, you guys don't understand, like, how hard it is for someone who has a child and isn't married um, and is just middle-aged to live in this community, to be honest. There's so much gossip mm -hmm. that goes around them for no apparent reason. And, like, you know, it was just every time we would hear something, it would literally have no basis at all um for example right once she talked to a married man at an event but not even talked she just salamed him because obviously in our Uyghur community if we see someone we know or if we see someone older that we respect we salam them right that's all that happened the next day it was people saying oh my gosh she went up to a married man she did this she did that it's just stuff like that genuinely makes our community so toxic um, I feel like Uyghur people are sometimes very quick to make assumptions and obviously I'm not saying our community as a whole but there are individuals who are so quick to make assumptions and there mm -hmm. are individuals who will make up things um, so I just feel like it's a really big problem that we seem to attack women so much you know so going off of that I was wondering if you guys ever feel insecure about some things um, when you're around the Uyghur community as a girl you know yes like I gotta I gotta be very careful with how I act I have to make sure I read everybody like I have to make sure like I don't get too close with like some like guy friends because mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know this, I don't know parents make up stuff and it's really disgusting and inappropriate you know considering my age but yeah you just gotta be super cautious like you can't be free because like I, you can feel like all the eyes they're on you like every time I go somewhere like I feel like all the eyes are on me and yeah I felt that mm -hmm. and I think that makes it kind of harder to connect with people because like the Uyghur communities in Canada and America are smaller than of course than how they were in Vet then like you're really scrutinized like you said at events all the eyes are on the youth um, but I feel like that makes it harder to connect with the youth like it's hard to have guy friends and be platonic and have 
a stable relationship with someone who's your age who is a guy um because all of these rumors were, will spread about you guys if you're ever even seen together in public i think it's an impediment to like the advancement of uyghur culture and uyghur society because there's like a lack of communication between the two like genders between like we were guys and we were girls and I feel like that plays into when we're older because we don't really you know there's different expectations set for each other and we've never really communicated well and I think that's better with our generation I think we're better with that communication aspect but I think like maybe in older generations or maybe even like generations after us because they've been growing up in such a scrutinized way like I don't know I don't know and also another big thing is I feel what we wear as girls mm -hmm. um what we wear and also this is just like a small example if we're at an event i remember my mom would always tell me i don't i know a lot of moms say that to their daughters they're just like don't cause a scene you know mm -hmm. so i just feel like we're expected to act a certain way when we're surrounded by other Uyghurs and obviously um dressing is like i mean not dressing why did I say dressing like salad dressing <laughs> ranch ranch Italian okay anyways um the way we dress is also super important I know we can't wear revealing clothes it can't be too tight um I don't know it has to be fit for the occasion just stuff like that I don't know it can get stressful sometimes literally each time there's a wedding I'd be looking months in advance because I she can't <laughs> because I well, want to look cute but I don't want to look like a grandma you know this so I have to <laughs> This is not about planning ahead. Nurperi is just insane. Like, let me tell you guys. Let me tell you three. Not exposing me more. It's insane. She will... Okay, there will be a potential wedding. Like, let's say next... <gasps> like, next five months, there might be a wedding. There may be a wedding. She will start planning. What dress will I wear? She should. Start online she shopping. May. First of all, this is an over-exaggeration. No, okay, it's not. I admit... I admit that I plan months in advance, but that's only if the wedding is finalized. What? And how would I know about a wedding if it isn't actually yeah. happening? In Virginia, there is like a couple wed weddings happening like pretty soon. I mean, they're not solid. Like there's no solid date or anything, but everybody knows that they're happening soon. And Nurperi has been planning it out. Like we've literally had multiple calls and she'll always mention like, oh, like, what do you think you're going to wear? But like, or like, I kind of was looking like on this store the other day, like girl, the the wedding won't be happening for like five months <laughs> what? okay Listen five six months that. like what? what i have to say what are you looking at hold it come on get both let me let me <laughs> tell. okay this is what i have to say regarding this topic okay i honestly think this has just happened to me because of how because i'm traumatized i'm literally so traumatized from people talking <laughs> So whenever there's an event, and also I'm indecisive, I'm a Libra, right? So I'm like known for being indecisive. So when there's something coming up, I, like I said before, I want to look cute, but looking cute sometimes means like it's not appropriate for an old event, but I don't want to look like a grandma either. So months in advance, I start looking because or when there's like a few weeks left, if I can't find anything, I'm just not going to go because I get stressed out and I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to stay home. Like, Zlala, just has been up. Yeah. I just had, like, a whole, like, explosion. So that's why I We're like it. Like, Nifedi and I are opposites. We're polar opposites. I always plan everything in the head. Zlala will plan, like, an hour before. She'll be like, okay, whatever. I'll just throw this on. And I'm like, okay. And then everybody likes it. And everybody be like, you look Because you it. already have a lot of dresses at home. You guys are just like Zlala and I. Polar opposites opposites anything really? i like she hates anything she likes like i absolutely hate okay no we're not like that we still Wait, like what though like what do you how are you guys opposite? okay for example <laughs> if we're talking about the example you just gave like i'm like the type to like prepare like just two weeks before i like she takes like a month to prepare you know more than a month like, like more I'm than a month prepared. sorry like I think that you can never be too prepared <laughs> you have to be prepared for like every like scenario that could happen it's okay, we'll <laughs> read Zlala and Dilraba together at the end. Yeah, they, yeah. They can be besties now. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I may be a last minute planner, but I always show up. And I always get it done. What other things do you guys have that are like opposite from each other? I'm curious. Yeah, I can't like name it when someone asks, you know. Oh, food. Food. Oh, yeah. She eats food. anything. I don't eat anything. Mm. Especially meat. Like gush. I love gush. 
I love Gush. I did that you don't love Gush? No. You guys know my first word was Gush. Apparently, it wasn't even up on uh, Gush. That's how much I love Gush. I used to love it. Like, I grew out of it. So. We are the same when it comes to food, I feel like. We can agree. We can come to an agreement each time. And we like similar foods, I feel like. And we're not picky with Uyghur food. I don't really like polo, though. I know she likes polo. I'm not but other than polo. Yeah, but other than that, I'll eat anything. Polo, it's just, I don't know why, but I just kind of... Yeah, me too. Polo, I have like polo, mixed food. Polo is my favorite, guys. How can oh, you insult my polo? Oh, Lahman, Lahman is the best one, Lahman. I agree with that, Lahman. Lahman and, oh my gosh. Uh, and yeah. so mm-hmm. and um, Kaumanta. Kaumanta is really good. Kaumanta. Are you also... Oh, it's the best. Are you also? <laughs> oh, okay. Girl, what okay, are you guess saying? again, guess again. What do I look like? Because no, you know how they call also look people kawa. So that's why I was like, <laughs> <laughs> stop laughing at my people. Stop laughing. You you know? also- <laughs> oh, oh, imagine, can you imagine you're just born in a place and then somebody, some, somebody is just like pumpkin ass. <laughs> <laughs> they call each other kawa. <laughs> Guys, don't make fun of my people. You know? No, it's okay. I love Wait, really? isn't it an insult to call someone like a kawa? No, like, it's just like a joke. Can't... Like, it's like, like a lakan because you're born there. Like, you're from there. It's your... You know what, Zalala? Boldish. Shut if somebody up. called me a kawa, I think I would just die. <laughs> like... My dad has called me pumpkin from day one. <laughs> so, guys, guys, I really don't... Okay, wait. Let me guess where Dilraba is from. Are you Kashkalar? <laughs> really? I mean, yes, she is. <laughs> did I get it right? No. No. <laughs> Wait, why Why did you guys laugh when I said Kashka? What's wrong with Kashka? No, no, no. It's like total oh. opposite. Like, <laughs> oh. It's like far. Far from Kashka. Far from, is it Janup Taramush? <laughs> North or south? North, north. Kulja? Oh. Okay, let's guess where all of them are from. Okay, Akida. Mm, Turban. No. Okay, you're really bad at this, by the way. Like, yeah, so you are. Awkward. Give me a hint. Give me a hint. No, keep going. There's I... not, not many cities left anyway. So. Can I say one thing? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm mixed. So you have to, like, guess two. I'm mixed, too. Okay, wait. Let me think. Okay. Oh, I said a hotel. Huh? Yeah. Damn. Bro, okay, just give a give away the second one. I guess the first. Okay, one. my dad is Wojlok and my mom is Hotan. So. Oh. Okay, now we have to guess. She's light skin. They're yeah. sisters. Oh. They're sisters. <laughs> guess where I'm from first. Hashka. Okay, guess you were born in New York, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah. You are crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm okay, but guess like my t- like guess where my parents are from. I already gave away half also. Wait, wait, also, 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 right. also, right. also, also What's the other one? I'm mixed. Hold up. Hold up. Yes. Kuzlala, tell us what's the tigi 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 under the rimchik. Kashkalak shu. Apam nong tigi mo kashkalak, dada mo kashkalak. We're just all kashkalak, but I'm. Da. Okay. Ben Amerikalak, tigi mina tigam rimchik. Okay. Oh, yogan ish popto. No, you're not Amerikalak. You were born in rimchik, so you rimchik. Okay, but I'm saying like because I live here, like I'm a citizen oh, of here. Oh, okay, true. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, so Sebi, I have a question for you. Not me again. <laughs> yes, you again. Other than like school and stuff, like how is the social scene in people in your age group? You guys want to say your ages really quick? I realize we never asked well, you. I turned 16 in December. I turned 17 in December. We never ask a woman's age. Guys. <laughs> yeah, oh. Lala, why are you putting them on the spot like that? Hi, right, guys. So I'm 20. And I feel like people our age in um, in Canada, I've heard from slightly older people that when they date, they, they tend to not date within the community because it feels like you're just 
you know how it feels when you're like dating in your school even if you break up like you still see them mm -hmm. in your school that kind of vibe like it's such a small circle where you like you can't it's such a big risk to even like try to do anything i've i've encountered that not personally but you know i've seen wow. i've heard those are the heard so the you've encountered it sorry <laughs> Oh. No, no. But I think that's that's one struggle that people my age or slightly older young adults are facing. I'd say. Oh, trust me, it is a struggle. Nobody would know. <laughs> I would know. Nobody has experience. Huh? It's a struggle for real. But at the end of the day, like you just got to deal with it, you know, because you have no choice but to be in the same um situation. Uh, not situation. Be in the same. <laughs> environment at times being at the same events um but yeah you just have to get adjusted to it but it works out at the end everybody <laughs> is an experienced veteran in this how so, old are you i'm 19 ah and you still have it i'm 18 oh you're 18 and she's turning 19 this year and i'm turning 20 that's so scary Ooh, wait that's... sabi how what month were you born february <laughs> 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 like next week oh i feel like i know you guys i know i said this at the beginning but because i'd be seeing all of you guys on instagram i'm like i know her i know her i know her i feel like i've been following sebiha for a long time do you want to know something it's a secret so i don't know like way back when i don't even know i don't even remember if it was you but i'm pretty sure it was you posted like this guitar video <laughs> I thought it was so cool. I thought you were so cool. Like, I was like, wow, this girl is so pretty. And she plays the guitar so well. Like, this was so way back, like, years ago, you know? And, like, I didn't even know you. And, like, I didn't even know how old you were. But I just assumed we were the same age. And I was like, wow, this girl's so cool. Like, she plays the guitar. Like, she's pretty. Where is that guitar video now? I don't know. I remember when I went to Canada and I saw her performing, I thought she was pretty talented too. In general, the Canada youth really shocked me. Like they have some really talented people. I can't believe I set the standard for Canada. <laughs> it was a good standard. It's been my role model since I was 10. Like Aww. me? Yeah. Oh my never God. Lala, I've never told you this, but like <laughs> I'm so glad we're friends. <laughs> Bye guys, I gotta go. <laughs> Yo, where is that? Where is that like chai thingy? Sorry, we left this to the end, guys. Here's your chai. We get that. I would like to apologize for the appearance of our chain neck this episode. Um, Nurpeti and I are both away from home at college, and so we were not able to get a beautiful chain neck for you guys, but we are working on that. So look forward to a big gorgeous beautiful and gorgeous chain neck in the coming episodes but anyways as i was saying earlier i'm 10 hours away from home i have a question how did your, your parents like let you be away that far from home my mm -hmm. parents are all about academics they're mm -hmm. all about academics so they're like we it's fine if the university is far away just go to the best one and then they're like they're like, anyways, when you grow up and you like have a job, you're gonna move back here anyway. So, I'm so like, huh? what are you studying? What are you studying? I'm studying political science. <sighs> but it do be a struggle for real, y'all. I miss Euler food. Oh my god, I have something to tell you guys. I tried. Okay, so completely by myself, I tried to make lahmet at my friend's house. And, like, I have made lagman before. Like, I know how to make lagman. But, like, comp like I don't know what went wrong. But, literally, the human was the size of my thumb. <laughs> it, was it was so, so embarrassing. It was so bad <laughs> that it wasn't cooking in the water because the noodles were too thick. <laughs> Like, how did you roll it? Like, was it really thin? No, no, it's not that I rolled it wrong. It's like, the way you made it? The dough wasn't like firm enough. Yeah. So I didn't let it stay out long enough. So I like made everything fine. It's just big bush book up to him. So mm -hmm. when I rolled it out and everything, it looked thin. It, and I did it fine. It was like in chick. And then I put it in the water and it was like <laughs> like a piece of bread. Like none again then hold on. 
<laughs> it was so bad. I miss Uyghur food so much. Here in Montreal, there's like five Uyghur restaurants, including Iskia, that I own. Wow! Okay. Shout out Uzgu, best food out there. So before we wrap up today, is there any topics that you guys want to specifically touch on? I think the effort <laughs> of having Uyghur friends, like just being surrounded with people that you can relate to, like you have the same culture, language and everything. Like, I think that's important because like ever since I became very included, in the community like like I feel like I belong I feel closer to my culture and yeah like I'm much closer to my culture ever since I became friends with the little Aww. like before I used to be very like ashamed of like telling people of where like where I come, come from because whenever I told them they would never know like they never knew so I would just be very embarrassed but then ever since I became friends with the little Rabat, like I'm not ashamed to say like to tell people where I'm from it's so sweet. Oh, <laughs> definitely because like the Uyghur youth here have that disconnect with Vetten. Like we can't really communicate with them. We can't really um indulge ourselves in Uyghur culture. I think Uyghur friends are really important with preserving our identity. Um, I know a problem that we have is that we don't really talk Uyghur with one another as much as we should. Like I find. Most of the time, I find myself speaking English with a lot of my Uyghur friends. Um, but I I really like the idea, and I love having my Uyghur friends, and I think they really bring out the Uyghur within me. Do you guys yeah. ever mix? Okay, from a young age, I could speak Uyghur, right? Because it was my first language. But then once I started going to school, I started mixing Uyghur oh. and English together. So I would be like... My mom would be like, did you cut like your clothes yet? And I'd be like, no, I'm cut them right now. You know, just like mixing them in together. My parents hate it when I do that. No, it would just like happen. And I would just be like, oops, like, what am I saying? Because like once I started going to school and learning English, it was like hard to find a balance at times. So I just like started saying it like that. I mean, we, 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 grew, we, up, we grew up, like, like we spent our most, most of our childhood in that time. So we kind of, when we came here, the transition was big. Like, you just like, you know, then it's like, you have so many like Uyghur friends, you grew up in that in that environment and you come here and it's like, you don't have any friends, I mean, yeah. in the beginning. But now it's um the, the community, the, the youth here is pretty united. And uh, going off of that, like, how is the, your community at school? Like, I know we've really found a connection with our Uyghur friends, but I know you mentioned, Akida, that it was kind of hard to explain that you're Uyghur to people. Um, and I've definitely experienced that. Like, growing up, I've sometimes, like, especially when I was much younger, I wouldn't tell people that I was Uyghur because it was just kind of, I felt like it was embarrassing to explain to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's something that I've definitely grown past as I've gotten older. But do you guys want to kind of talk about those experiences? Well, at school, like, I go to, like, a pretty dominantly white school. Same with Dorova. So, like, we're the ones that stand out, kind of. Like, even though everyone is doing their own thing, like, I personally feel like I stand out, even though no one cares about me. So, like, it's Damn, like, girl. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Who <laughs> hurt you? <laughs> um, like, no one cares about me at school. Like, I care about you. <laughs> we don't go to school we with her, Tamala. That's not what she's talking about. So, like, I definitely <clears throat> feel out of place because everyone at school is Italian, you know? But then I'm Uyghur, like no one knows who I am. Like recently I had an English presentation and I mentioned my roots, my culture. And so at the end, like I was asked where my country is and like where I'm from. And when I said I'm from East Turkestan, they're like, does that even exist? I was like, oh, I never knew that country existed. And I, I felt so like offended. Like it's not their fault. They didn't know that what then exists, but like, I just felt so offended, you know? And yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, like, at the beginning, when I was called up, like, someone literally struggled to say my name. And, like, to this day, I'm so angry about it because, like, my name is, like, literally pronounced Akita, you know, at school. And, like, uh, it's just so annoying. Yeah, like, let's not talk about how our names are pronounced at school, guys. Let's not talk about that. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, your name is much more complex than mine. So, like... 
So my name is Nur Betty, right? But people just can't seem to say Nur or Petty that well. So they would say Napari. They would be like, <laughs> Napari, Napari. I was like, bruh, it's not that deep. It's not that hard. Just practice a couple of times. And each time a teacher would say that, it would like actually annoy me so much. Um, but also I feel like people not knowing um, about what East Turkestan is like, that's just everywhere, you know? Like it's a problem we face everywhere. Like obviously there's people... Um, who do know about it but most of the time like anyone that I meet and like they're like oh where are you from and I tell them they're like oh I didn't know that was a thing you know like up till now even though like it's gained more recognition and stuff like more people know about it um, it's still a problem that exists mm -hmm. yeah here in like Montreal like right now recently like Uyghurs like a lot of people like know about it I feel like because like even at school like like I changed schools and like the place I'm living right now there's not much like other like races, you know, it's mainly just white people. And like when I first came to the school, like no one knew what Uyghur was. And like now I feel like a lot of people like know about it. Like when I bring it up, people are like, oh, like, oh, I'm so sorry about what's happening, you know? Okay, but yeah, about that, at um, least that happened because you were born in Urumqi. I don't know what happened to my parents, but I was born here and they put my name on my birth certificate as Nurpari Miji T. And I was like, bruh. So literally I changed my last name to Kelpen last year, right? But then until then, everywhere I go, Nurpari Mi GT. And I was like, bruh. But our like, case is slightly slightly different. Um our name is like much longer, but in French, because my mm. like, in name is French, it torso changes. But the R is red hey, so it's like torso, like so it's like yeah, yeah, it was like, <laughs> like and like the H, the H is also silent. So it's like Sebia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, my last name is actually Abu Qadir, but on my documents it says Abu Qadre. So like literally everywhere I'm called Abu Qadre. Like that sounds Spanish. It, it's so it's so humiliating. <laughs> and at school when they call my name on the intercom, they're literally struggling to say my name. They're like, Can Akira Abu Qadre come to the office? And it's so hum humiliating. Wait, I have something else to say about names. Okay, so you know how, like, we watch Itot, right? Like, uh -huh. comedy shows or whatever, but, like, mm -hmm. we watch versions, like, skits or whatever. So once I was watching this one Itot, and then there was this one girl, and her name was Maimunem. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry if there's actually a name like that like in our like with Uyghurs but when they said that like I couldn't stop laughing I was like what the fuck names their child Maimun like Maimun and then M. like monkey like but I think they did that on purpose to be funny like these awesome no but then no that's what I thought right but then once I was like with my friends and I was like telling them I was like ha 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 Maimun and then like one of like the Apoches or Dutchess says they came up and they were like oh like I know someone with that name like, it's actually a name back home. And I was like, can you imagine going through, like, hours of labor to give birth to a child? And then you look at your child and you're like, Maimunem. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm going to name you Maimunem. <laughs> like, what meaning does that name even have? Monkey. Monkey like, M. Like, just making it more girly. Like, girl like, version my of monkey. My monkey. My monkey. <laughs> my monkey. Like, my monkey. Oh, my God. Kilo Maimunem. Like, what? Anyways, before we wrap up today, is there anything you guys want to And that's a wrap. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Chit Chat and Chai. Thank you guys for joining us all the way from Canada. Um, and we hope to see you guys for our next episode. Bye. Thank you for watching. Bye. Like and subscribe.